Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webcast uh, about the CV human model validation. Um, I hope you all uh, can see the can see the presentation and, and uh, can hear what I'm saying. Um, see, uh, this evening, there will be uh, the host of this uh, webcast will be Anne Keith, He's uh, right over here, and uh, then Mark Desai will be the panelist, and he will be answering questions uh, as we go through this presentation, and I will be the presenter. My name is uh, Christian Kamenard Bolson, and uh, I'll be doing this presentation. Um, as you saw, Mark today will we'll be answering some questions, and uh, those questions you can, you can actually type in while we're, while I'll, I'll be presenting, and, uh, and that you can do by down in your right corner of the money service. Uh, icon here where there's a question mark and if you, if you click that one, this uh, question and answer panel will open up and you can type in your questions and, and you'll get the, get the answers back here. Um, at least if it's uh, like a, a simple quick question that's quick to, uh, to answer uh, or if it's a more general question that we think that would be good for everyone to know then uh, I'll be uh, reading the question out loud later and, and answering it. Make sure when you send the, this question that you, you choose host, presenter, and panelist. Then everyone in this room will, will get the, uh, the question and it will, be, it will be possible to answer it right away or I'll save it for later. If you can already hear what I'm saying, this, uh, this slide is, is not really for you guys, so, so please ignore it. And, Bear with me for for putting it here for 30 seconds. Uh, so we'll see if some more people can, 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 can actually get to hear me. Okay, I think we will be moving on. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, since this is uh, the first webcast I'm doing, well, that's not exactly true because I did one this morning also, but um, probably you guys didn't hear it. Uh, I'll be introducing myself. Um, my name, as I said before, is Christian. I'm, um, last year I graduated as a biomedical engineering uh, master of science and uh, with a specialization in biomechanics. Um, previously, uh, during my my studies, I, I worked with anybody, um, with anybody's uh, software, and, and um, thereby got some kind of uh, idea of what was going on in the software. And um, whenever I, when, I, when I was done with my, my studies last year, I, I started as a PhD student in the Ingrid Research School at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Popper University. My supervisor that back then, that as a master student, and also now is uh, Professor John Rasmussen and Dr. Mark Kizé. Uh, Mark Kizé will be, as you saw earlier, he's the panelist, so he'll be answering some of the, the questions that you guys uh, type in during the presentation. So the agenda for, the, uh, for today is, uh, first of all, I'll talk a little bit about the seeded model and uh, some of the objectives of, of, uh, of my a research project, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the validation experiment and some of the results and, and what we can use this uh, this model for. Uh, again, I want to uh, to mention to you guys that that it's possible to ask questions as we go on through this presentation, and you can do that by clicking down on the right side of the screen where there's a question mark, and this question and answering panel will will pop up and you can. And type in your questions and you'll get answers here. Um, some of the questions I, I will go through after the presentation. Make sure that when you, before you send it, you choose host, presenter, and panelist as uh, the ones that you are asking. Um, that, that way we can we all get the, the questions and we'll try to answer it. Moving on to the seated model. The seated model is the uh, was developed by the furniture industry uh, a couple of years ago. 
And actually, there was a there's a webcast uh, online you can download, which is roughly two years old, I think, uh, held by Professor John Rasmussen, um, and which goes through in detail how the model is built and, and so on. And the model is uh, available in public domain at uh, this very nice new web page www.angscript.org, um, where it's, it's available on this public domain so you can, you can actually download the model for free if you have the software to use it. Uh, the model is an inverse dynamic model, and um, it, as you see on this uh, right side of the screen, this is uh, basically the model. So it's uh, a human sitting in a generic chair. And the chair consists of uh, whatever a, a chair normally consists of a seat and a backrest, an armrest, a legrest, and a footrest, and also a headrest, actually. And uh, these, uh, these part of the chair, you can actually you can adjust to, you can adjust various things on it. For example, uh, the friction coefficient on, on the support surfaces, uh, the size of the chair, the backrest, the seat, foot, uh, etc. can uh, can be adjusted so you can lie down the backrest and, and raise the footrest and so on. And I'll give you a couple of examples on that later. So the human body of the of that model is uh, is kind of well, it's in in that repository I was talking about that you know that's something available. There's um, there's different parts of the body and you can uh, put these parts together. Like here we have a, a, a lumbar spine model with uh, Take all the muscles and joints uh, and, uh, and bones, and here we have a shoulder model, and uh, in that way, all the different parts of the of the body can be put together, and then suddenly we have this uh, whole body model, a full body model. And then we make a chair. We have here seen on the side, and we put the model uh, so it's sitting in the chair right here, and. Um, now we can set up the, the the chair so we can lean back the backrest as you see on in, in the right hand side of the screen. First we have a vertical uh, backrest and then start leaning it back more and more. And the body moves with the chair. And um, then the external forces can be calculated on the if you do an inverse uh, dynamic analysis then uh, the the external forces will be calculated, and by external forces, I mean the forces acting between the human body and the, and the chair. And those are represented by these blue lines that you see, um, like those right here. And you know, also have forces in this direction, and so on. So those, those are the external forces. Another thing that, that's also calculated is um, the, uh, the internal forces, those that, that are produced by the muscles and the and also the, uh, the reaction forces in the joints. Uh, so you both have external and internal forces calculated. So, so that, that was all about um, the seated model so in, in general, and I will move into the objective of, of my research area, uh, which is within pressure ulcers um, and the seated discomfort. So a lot of people like to make comfortable chairs and uh, do not like discomfort. However, a discomfortable chair is very, it's very subjective to, to measure if a, if a chair is uh, discomfort, if, if people feel discomfort sitting in a chair. Um, and it's, it, uh, we can have considered an analog to a pressure ulcer for a paraplegic person. So if a, if a healthy subject or uh, a healthy person sits uh, discomfort, Discomfortably in a, in a chair, then you will sit and move around, and it will not be comfortable, obviously. Um, where if, if you are paraplegic and um, and, it, it, uh, and you feel the discomfort, and if you won't feel it, you will just get a, a pressure ulcer, uh, which is uh, a bit more objective. Uh, we like to say, uh, looking at the pressure ulcer down here, is we consider that very objective, where the discomfort is more subjective. Um, this sitting acquired pressure ulcer, so the, the pressure ulcers that you get underneath your, your buttocks when you sit, um, some of them are called deep tissue injuries. And uh, 
uh, those are the ones that uh, it, it's very difficult to, to find out how many of these stores that are actually these deep tissue injuries and how many are as more as uh, superficial in, in uh, pulses. However, these deep tissue injuries, they, uh, they start uh, in the deeper tissues. Uh, as you see here on the, on the right hand side of the screen, uh, it's a uh, skin model. And on the top, you have the epidermis and the, the damage and the, the fat and the, the muscle tissue comes from the bone um, comes from the bottom. And these, these ulcers, they actually start down here in the muscles and, and the fat tissue. And then they, they can spread out in various directions. And they don't always have to, to go uh, right up to the skin to begin with. Um, sometimes they, they spread out, on, out underneath and then become this visual on the surface uh, later on. And in that case, it can maybe be too late and, and uh, they can be useful for the patient. And um, yeah, that, and but at some point, then you, it will be possible to see on the surface as, as here. And then yeah, there will be a lot of necrotic tissue. So there have been a lot of these, uh, there have been a lot of risk factors identified within this pressure ulcer research. So, so uh, people have tried to identify uh, risk factors that, that are dangerous for, for different patients to uh, be subjected to. Um, one of the risk factors is the high pressure. So high pressure on the, the buttocks will be dangerous for a patient. That could be uh, that can actually be measured by a pressure mapping uh, map that you lie underneath the, uh, the buttocks, and then you sit on it and see how the pressure distribution uh, Another one is uh, a shear force, so a high shear force um, could be a, 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 a considered a, one of the, the risks. And the high shear force is um, a force on the seat in, in this direction, and that, um, that is considered uh, one of the main risk factors why I, I, I highlighted it a little bit, because this is actually where a lot of work has been, has been going on in the last few years, and uh, trying to identify what is, the, what is it that happens with the shear force, what does it cost, why, why is it so dangerous. Another one could be large pressure gradient, uh, which can also be measured with the, the pressure distribution tool. Uh, then there's things as heat, moisture, nutrition, etc., 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 and those are not really um, uh, the, those you cannot directly link them to, to moisture. So, so I'm not going to talk a lot about that. So, what is that causes these deep tissue injuries? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, uh, there was this Dutch group that uh, did a study on uh, mechanical stress states in this soft tissue and found out that it's actually that the mechanical uh, stresses that this, these cells are subjected to that, that causes them to, to become necrotic. And uh, then the question is how can we minimize this stress uh, applied to the, this tissue? Um, well, that, that's a very good question. And uh, the first problem is probably how to know what the, the stresses are in, in this, uh, inside the box and how to calculate this. Well, that can be done by using final element models. And uh, here on the bottom of the screen, I, I put three pictures up of, of three different models. Well, the first one is uh, a Dutch model from 2003. It's a, it's a 2D model. Um, so we have the, the bone and the muscle fat, skin, and so on. And then we are, they, uh, it's a 2D model, and they, they just uh, uh, press the bone into the, the muscle and, and uh, the soft tissue and the cushion. And they see, look at the, the stresses underneath the body in the soft tissues and the muscles. And uh, the next one is from 2007, that's from an Australian group. And uh, that's also a, 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 I think they call it a 3D model, but it is actually a 2D model that's only 3 millimeters thick. Um, basically, it's, it's 
a little bit the same. We have some uh, some bone here and some muscles and some fat and skin. And uh, yeah, and then the last model is from uh, last year. It's from uh, Dutch, you know, a German group in Frankfurt. That's uh, a full three D model, as you, you can see here. Has uh, a lot of very very uh, detailed material properties. Yeah, so, so the thing is with, with these models, what should we apply for boundary conditions on them? Well, um, we could look at the, the pressure distribution and try to apply that and so on. However, the, the shear stress was also very important. And taking that into account, the first two models, so the, the model from 2003 and 2007, and those are actually 2D models, so we cannot apply the shear stress now, um, and the shear force. And that, that would be impossible because the models don't really can, can handle it. However, it can be done in the in the, the last model. However, it has not been done yet. So that would be a, a very nice uh, thing to do, actually. So basically, uh, the objective of, of my research is to be able to calculate these forces acting between the chair and the human body for different postures, so changing the seat angle or hyperspin angle and so on. Uh, and that can be done by this uh, heat model, as I talked about earlier. Uh, however, it needs to be validated. So we have to find out that uh, if the forces that the model calculate are actually the same as they should be uh, in the real world. So there are different ways of validating these, uh, this, these kind of results and these kind of models. Uh, one could be trends. And uh, by trends, I mean uh, if we lean back the backrest, so get uh, some output force uh, that we're interested in. Um, you can see if, if it goes up, and uh, if it does the same in, in the real world, then that would be a, a trend validation. It could also be done towards absolute value, so that would be the, that the forces actually are exactly the same as well as in the, in the, um, as in the, in the real world. Um, both of them are, are very important, very nice. Ways to, to validate them all. Um, so um, this validate, validation experiment uh, that I have been doing, I uh, would like to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, to begin with, I uh, this 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 work was part of my master thesis, I like to say. And uh, to begin with, I I got in touch with this uh, company of all tools right here, and uh, that company produces uh, lightweight wheelchairs. Custom made for for each uh, patient, and uh, they would like to help me make uh, my experimental chair uh, that would be able to have my forces. And uh, so I received this uh, CAD model of, the, of one of their wheelchairs, and uh, and I went into the lab and found my uh, my, my force plate and uh, some force transducers, and I could uh, build my my own little. Uh, Computer model of the how the, the chair should look like, and uh, then after a while we got the chair manufactured, and this was the result. So, so uh, now we have a force plate as a, as a seat here, it calculates forces in, in three directions, and also moments around each direction. And then there's the uh, force transducers here in the back first for those, and those uh, also have forces in three directions and moments as well. Um, putting it into the lab, we also have a, a, a force plate in the, in the floor here that we can raise, and that is uh, the exact same one as the one in the chair, uh, in the seat, so it can measure the same forces. Um, so I did three experiments, or uh, experiments on three uh, male healthy subjects, almost uh, 26 years old, all of them, plus 92. Um, a similar, a very similar weight that was a mean of 76 kilos. And a height of 1 meter, 77 centimeters. Um, the, the, the subject specifications, I would like to say, is uh, the chosen from, um, it should be uh, very similar to whatever the uh, anybody model was uh, was built on uh, the kind of data that was, that the model was built on, and uh, uh, 
Yeah, that, this was uh, roughly the size of the of that data set. This was done in order to uh, we could scale the model and, and uh, try to make stuff uh, that the model fit each person. Uh, however, then we, we would also be validating the scaling of the model, and that uh, we like to not do in this case. So, in the experiment, we had the just four parameters to change. So that was the, the height of the, the, the footrest here. We can raise that, and it's the angle of the the angle of the seat and the angle of the backrest, and then the height of the backrest. These can go up and down. So those, those were the four parameters, and um, for each subject, they were varied in five different uh, uh, settings, and three trials for for each setting was conducted, and they were sitting in a relaxed position for 20 seconds. Yeah, and there all these white uh, markers you can see the, the subject and the chair is bearing um, is uh, reflective markers that are, are seen by this camera system we have in, in, in the lab where eight infrared uh, quality pro reflex cameras are looking at the uh, at these markers and you can see in the middle all the green markers are representing the, the white markers on the subject and the chair so when all these experiments were done um, Start setting up anybody models. Um, so uh, for each experiment, one model was set up, and the forces were calculated. As uh, you see in these two pictures, they, uh, the model represents the same posture as, as the person had in the um, in the experiment. And in the experiment, the forces were calculated from the force measuring uh, plate, force plates and, and force transducers, and in the in the model. It was calculated uh, exact same forces, so we compare them directly. Yeah, so you can see the model is uh, the model over here is, is uh, fitted a little bit to the to the experiment, so uh, we don't have the leg rest as we had before, and uh, the, the back rest has become two uh, two bars as it is here and, uh, uh, in the experiment, and, and we remove the headrest and the armrest. Now moving into the to the results, and uh, the first result I'd like to show you is um, changing the seat angle. So changing the seat angle from one where we lean back a lot and towards the other end where it uh, leans forward. And the blue uh, squares are, are data uh, collected on the experiment, and you can see those they go very much out of line. Something like this. They're not necessarily a, a linear line or anything. That's why I haven't made a linear regression on them. Uh, where the model is uh, pretty much represented on, on top of all the, um, the experiments, and then it also goes pretty much like this. Uh, so, so that seems pretty nice actually, and, and uh, it seems like the, the model and the experiment agrees uh, pretty well. And trying another one. Um, here on the left side, we have a backrest, and changing the backrest angle. Um, oh, I think I forgot to mention that uh, the output we're, we're looking at here on the first on, the, on this first uh, result page is the seat shear force. So the shear, the shear force acting on the seat in, in this direction would be positive. Um, you can actually see that some of them are negative over here. And the same for this one, uh, we're looking at the seat shear force. Uh, so again, this is positive, and uh, we're seeing how this, this shear force changes as we impact the backrest. Uh, the shear force is generated by you lean into the backrest to begin with, and, uh, and then you have a resulting shear force on the seat in this direction. So, so looking at the results here, we start uh, in this end where we have a very vertical. Um, uh, backrest, and uh, here we are lying a bit more, a bit more down. And, uh, and, and th at this time, it's um, the experiment and the, 
the model doesn't really agree as, as good as, as they did before. Yeah. At least not in, in the first part of it. So in this part we are we have some some variation something that they, they don't really agree where as, as we move a little bit towards this end it, it becomes more uh, it, it starts to agree a bit more and becomes quite close actually. So uh, this could be explained by having a very vertical uh, backrest you, you will have to voluntarily lean into the backrest so actually activating some of your muscles to, to lean into the backrest to produce a, uh, a shear force. And, um, and the model seems to work, uh, uh, lean more into the backrest than, than the subjects or the, the experiments. Uh, get. And uh, this could be, uh, well, it, it, it's hard to explain it, but uh, there will probably also be a higher degree of variation between the different people and how much they would like to lean into the backrest. Uh, however, they can prove that the model does it a little bit too much, and we have to find a solution to that. Um, so the, the third result is. Um, Looking at the height of the backrest, so I could uh, you remember I could uh, lower or, or raise the, the backrest height, and um, I'll be presenting this in a, a little these results in a different way than the earlier ones. I will put it out in three different subjects. So we have the three different subjects here: uh, the blue, red, and green line, and um, it seems like they are in some kind of way moving this way, um, meaning that when you're Increase the height of the backrest, then you decrease the heat shear force. Uh, and uh, looking at uh, the antibody model, uh, it could be kind of a mean of these uh, of these subjects. Uh, it, it looks like this, and uh, so it goes in the same direction, and and, uh, and the absolute values are not uh, very much of it is roughly uh, half a kilo, one kilo uh, of it in the shear force, which is not a lot, it's actually quite close. Um, that the result is actually pretty good. So I've been uh, looking at all the seed shear forces here. People might ask why I'm not looking at the normal forces and, and so on. And uh, that's because the normal force doesn't really change much. Uh, except for when you lean back the backrest, then you might, more of your weight will start to be carrying on the, on the backrest instead of the seat. Uh, however, the seat shear force is, uh, is changing a lot as soon as you, you change your posture, and, uh, and which is another reason for this is very interesting, uh, seat shear force. So for those of you that uh, are advanced to uh, anybody users or developers, I, uh, I put this slide on that those of you that don't understand what a um, uh, recruitment algorithm is, uh, um, please bear with me spending 30 seconds on this slide, but it's actually quite interesting if you, if you understand what it is. So um, I'll just go quickly over this. It's basically, it's the same result as before where we have look at the seat angle. And uh, in this side, we, we lean back in this side, we lean forward. And out the x-axis, we have the, the, the forces, the shear forces measured in the experiment, and of the y-axis, it's the ones that happen in the model. So plugging these against each other should give a linear line of a slope of 1 and uh, uh, intersecting at uh, 0. And, and uh, then I've done it for different uh, solvers, like uh, a linear solver, a quadratic solver, polynomial power of five, uh, 3 and 5, and then a mean max strict solver. And uh, I'm, I made these uh, linear regression lines and, uh, uh, through, the, uh, through the data sets, and uh, we have all the functions uh, over here. And uh, looking at the, the, the best one I put on top, okay, um, that's the mean max strict. Which gives a slope of 0 0.92 um, and it, it intersects at minus 4, so minus 4 newton, that's not a lot, that's 4, that's um, like half a kilo. And um, looking at the, 
the other solvers we have 1.38, 1 1.38, 1 1.25, and 1.8. So that's not, they're not as good as the mean max strict solver. However, the other polynomial, the power of 5, uh, is the best one among the others. Um, yeah, so moving on to the next slide. Um, one of the results I you might think is missing is uh, I talked about that I raised the footrest, uh, the height of the footrest, and I looked at, uh, looked at the results of that. Uh, however, the model didn't really uh, act the way I wanted it to, so I have included the, the full results in this, uh, this book custom. I, got a, I have a good idea of what is, what's wrong with it, so I, I probably will be able to improve it and, and hopefully be able to get that results out later. However, I, uh, I put this um, the experimental results, which is in the uh, right top of your screen. So that's the, the graph where with the yellow squares on it. That's the experimental results here. So we can see that uh, racing the, the well, it's on the x-axis, it's, it's the distance from the surface to the peak. So uh, over here in the left side is a raised footrest or a high footrest very close to the seat and over here is a low one that the person barely can, can touch and as you see the normal force on the, uh, on the footrest decreases as we lower the footrest which makes totally sense and um, however the, the model didn't really agree with me on that one so we'll come back to that Just to see if the model was totally off, I, I took the generic model that we showed to begin with and, and made a, a similar uh, experiment where I just lowered the, the, the footrest and saw what the normal forces on the footrest was, and that's uh, represented in, in this graph down here. Um, so indicating that uh, the model is in general not totally off with this footrest uh, measure, it's just uh, my model that's off. Um, another thing that would be nice to uh, to evaluate or to look at the, for validation purposes is, would be the the body center of mass. So the, the center of mass for the body seen in the, in, the, in the chair and also that for the the, uh, the model and see if those two agree. Uh, that I have not uh, able to do yet, however, it will come. Um, I also like, like to say that overall I think the results are very promising. And, the model should, uh, it, it, it kind of does it, its job with a few uh, changes at least. So uh, one thing you could ask was um, where our experiments valid. So it's not nice that our experiments and that the model agrees. However, if we did the two simple experiments that that, uh, that, are, that are not really realistic, then, uh, then it doesn't really matter. Does it? Uh, however, in the literature last year, I heard this study by uh, this Dutch group and Paul van Piefenor, which I probably don't pronounce right, um, since I'm not Dutch. Um, and uh, they did a kind of similar study, but uh, they did some things uh, the same way. For instance, they changed the seat angle, as, uh, as we also did. And uh, the results are shown here on the right side of this white plot. And um, what they saw was, I guess, that their, their uh, results also normalized, uh, which makes it impossible to, to calculate or to, to compare their absolute values. Uh, however, when they uh, didn't act the, the seat, they got a, uh, uh, they got a, they found less uh, shear force or negative shear force actually. So uh, in this way, and they got quite a lot of data points. So which is exactly the same as we saw in our results, in our experimental and uh, modeling results, indicating that uh, we're not totally off on the experimental side. Um, so future work, what can we get out of this? Um, well, obviously the validation uh, should be completed, and, um, and what, can this, what can the model then be used for? Well, the season model can provide boundary conditions for a finite element model. So uh, that way you can find out 
what's the effect of shear forces on the, on the soft tissue within the, uh, the box actually uh, how this how this soft tissue is uh, so, uh, what stress is it subjected to uh, by the shear force on the seat uh, and if that uh, that's, uh, that is one of the risk factors you can start to optimize the seat posture uh, in order to minimize this tissue stress on the box. So we can say that the, the model, the seat model here, will provide input data to, to the Sonnet Elman model that uh, will calculate stresses to see down here. And, uh, and those stresses we we'll, would we'll like to minimize, and uh, that we can do by, by again, uh, changing the, the seat posture and, and thereby changing. The reaction force between the seed and the human body, and that can again be feed into it. Then we have a nice loop going around, and we find the perfect seed solution, or at least what we would like to call it. And so again, optimize the seed posture to minimize tissue stress. So uh, in the end, I would like to acknowledge a few companies that have been supporting uh, and this work, and. Uh, Obviously, there, there will be time for more questions now, and if you find out later on that you have more questions, you're very welcome to send me an email on this email. And you know, anybody's technology, I've asked you to, uh, um, to, to talk about this next webcast, which will uh, take place in June the 25th, and will be, uh, uh, the title will be Features of Muscle Recruitment Algorithms. So that we'll be talking about all these recruitment algorithms. I showed this advanced uh, results from uh, and the speaker will be uh, my supervisor, Professor, Professor John Rasmussen, uh, from Columbia University as well. And um, now I'd like to say thank, thank you very much for listening to this, uh, this webcast, and I, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you have a lot of questions, and uh, if you haven't typed them in already, you'll